everybody, and welcome to a very special and exciting episode number 50 of Whitling's Prototype. The plan for today is we're going to try and make sure that if we try and smash cubes on top of each other like this, that the physically linked cubes reject the move and do the wiggle. They do the fail wiggle. <clears throat> Uh, you also might have noticed that if I spin this cube and release the mouse on this cube, it's going to select this one here. That's another bug that we want to fix. Actually, it selected this cube here, which is interesting. It must have been the raycast. Okay, so there are a couple different ways to go about doing this. Um, the first one I was thinking is because each of my cubes is one by one by one. That would mean I could, in memory, make a map of where each cube is. And then I could easily say, oh, is this cube going to here? Does any other cube occupy this particular grid unit in the 3D grid? And that is a decent solution. I feel like there are a few drawbacks, um, the biggest drawback being if I ever have cubes that, you know, move back and forth in space like a, pl like a floating platform, I don't even know if my design <clears throat> will allow for that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to brute force it for now, keep it nice and simple. So essentially, whenever I move a physically a set of physically linked cubes, I'm just going to take each of these cubes and check their position against every other cube on the map. Like I said, not efficient. Oh, we got some pathfinding stuff to deal with too still. Um, <clears throat> but I'd really like to get this physical rotation stuff working correctly first. So, I think it shouldn't be too much of a stretch to brute force it. Um, so here's our physical link. It's not going to be in handle rotate complete. I think it's going to be in pre-begin rotate, right? And we've already got this comment here, rotate them to test for validity. I'm going to change this for collisions with pre-existing cubes. <clears throat> um, do I know what direction they're supposed to be rotating at this point? I don't think I do. I think I need to do this in the on-begin rotate. Um, I think it's in cube rotator. No, it's in cube core. Handle, begin, rotate. <clears throat> so yeah, here we um, do the rotation, calculate the hidden faces, and rotate it back. And we activate and break all paths first. So we're going to stick with that here. Uh, here we're activating and breaking all paths. <laughs> so at this point, everything should be parented, right? Yeah, our pre-begin rotate sets the parentage. <clears throat> So we're actually, this is kind of interesting. Now nah, we are still going to have to do it separately. <clears throat> but um, this transform rotation equals get target rotation. And we'll rotate it back to original position for the lerp. So here, and remember we have to keep in mind that our neighbor, 
Oh, man. We forgot to do this here. <clears throat> I bet that will fix our pathing errors. Um, so, it was this, and then this. Dang it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Worth a shot. Um, and let's see, in post, or where are we actually calling calculate hidden faces? Handle rotate complete. <clears throat> okay. Um, let's comment these out for now. And we'll stick with the paradigm that we have set up because I think there's a reason that I did this in the begin rotate. Okay, so... Um, before we even do any calculate hidden faces... Let's check for collisions. <clears throat> and I'd really like to create a temporary list here of physical links. To test. equals um, all neighbors dot two array no okay yeah so I believe that this should copy all of our neighbors into this two test. And then what we can do to make our life easier is add this to the list. <clears throat> because remember down here, we did all of this work and then we had to do it for this as well. Um, I wanna debug that just to be certain. Let's see. I want to make sure that my two test is not actually just referencing this other list. So all neighbors have a count of two, two test has a count of two, B and C. All neighbors still has a count of two, two test has a count of three, B, C, and A. Excellent. That's what I was hoping would happen. It's always good to test in small increments. <clears throat> so let's see. Got our bit to loop through. Oh, count. We're using a list. And maybe we'll put it to do in here. Um, maybe spatial partitioning if the need ever arises. <clears throat> and that's just, you know, splitting the world into smaller chunks. So instead of checking against all 100 cubes in my level, I can say, oh, this chunk has six cubes in it. And I know I need to, I care about this chunk, so I'll check this one. Um, we're also going to need an array of, I guess, game object all cubes. And our cubes are untagged, actually. So I think what I'm going to do is look for everything that has a cube core. That seems to make sense to me. All cubes
So we'll find all of the cube cores. <clears throat> Okay, so maybe we need to rename this. Um, we'll call this linked cubes, and we'll rename this to link index. And then we'll call this one test index. Now we are technically doing this every time a physically linked rotating cube begins to rotate, but that's not happening all the time. You know, it's happening once on the frame where I begin to rotate. So I think this will not cause a bottleneck or a spike. It could on extremely large levels, but um, I think it'll be okay. And we'll say links core is equal to linked cubes at link index dot core. Oh boy, there we go. <clears throat> Cube cure. Nope. Test core. So we've got our two cores that we're comparing with each other. And the first thing we want to do is make sure that we're not comparing a cube against itself, right? So if they're the same thing, skip the rest of the loop. Make sense? The next order of business is we need to find if these two things are going to end up overlapping. How did I do that? Do I actually have an overlap function? I believe I do. Hoo! Um. They, these are all vert generators, path nodes, line, whittling movement, cube core, nope, nope. Has neighbor face in face direction. I think we'll just do it all in here. <clears throat> or no, why not just do something cube core overlaps other cube core, right? That makes sense. So each cube core has a box collider. So we'll grab those. Well, why not? Um, why not just store that, right? I don't need to get this every single frame. Nope, this is a box collider.
And then in awake, cool. And then, <clears throat> so that means all cubes will have a collider. Intersects another bounds. <clears throat> now I do believe that these bounds are local. The world space of the bounding volume of the collider. Oh, this needs to return a bool. That was silly of me. Uh, let's do some printing here. Oh, that's going to be a lot of printing. But we should be able to see it pretty quickly. And then in here, <clears throat> we'll have a Boolean for valid rotation. We'll default it to true. We'll add an extra condition to our loop. Make sure as soon as this fails, we get out of the loop. And we'll do test core overlaps linked core. Now this should spam us to high heaven with a whole bunch of prints. And hopefully all of these prints have different values. I'm guessing that they won't. Yeah. Well, hey, center and extents. Um, interesting. Let's scream this so we can easily see it. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, you can see here the failure to rotate. So we need to do center plus extents, I think. And that's interesting, it only checked one, which is bizarre. So that means that the very first overlap check failed. Let's see who failed here. <clears throat> Physical link cube B with death cube. <laughs> yeah. yeah, our death cube is, I think is all the way over here. Yeah. So it thinks that these two cubes are overlapping, which is obviously not the case. Okay. 
Can I make static variables in functions? No, I can't. Uh, fine, fine. I mean, I guess I'm going to have to do it anyway. Wait, what? So it thinks it knows the center. I'm sure I've had this issue before. <clears throat> But I don't know where I solved it. Um, here's an idea. Let's control shift F for collider. Um, okay, center plus extents. Yeah, this is doing our our line drawing. This is the stuff we just did. Here's get component box collider. This is closest point. Don't think that's what we want. Overlaps other cube. Oh, test node overlaps other cube. Interesting. What is this relevant cube filter? <clears throat> Ooh, maybe this is it. No. Hmm. Forgot about this cube filter. Not a bad idea. We'll probably have to delve into it a little bit later. <clears throat> so it thinks that my that these two things are over intersecting. Let's check the API. Check if the bounding box comes into contact with another. Sure, yeah. So why does it think that they are that they are colliding? What's my code over here? I'm worried for a second. Wah wah wah. It's valid if they don't overlap. <laughs> Doll Gurnet. <laughs> okay. So physical link QB versus begin cube. Yeah, I was worried about that. So it thinks that these two are technically colliding. So I think what I'm going to need to do is manually size down the collider for specifically this check.
that would give us a reference to it. Um, dang, it's a bit of a pain in the butt. Okay, let's do it this way. Um, Collider.bounds.size times equals 0 0.9. Can I do this? Read only, huh? What? Set min max expand. <clears throat> so if I expand it by zero point nine, huh, this might not work. Calc, I take one and I multiply it by 0.9, and I multiply that by 1.1. See, yeah, that's not perfect. We want to get it right back to what it was. Can we just, like, set the size? Hmm. <laughs> I mean, we could use a separate collider for overlap checking like this, but that's a lot of extra work in cubes that don't need it. Although I guess, yeah, <laughs> I'd rather do it programmatically. That seems easiest to me. I don't think I can set the extents, can I? Yeah. Hmm, interesting problem. So let's see here. Um Not terribly useful. That's also not terribly useful. Oh, <clears throat> collider.extents. Oh, hey, I don't go into the bounds. The bounds are automatically calculated for me. Neato burrito. What do you think about this? Box collider oh, size, sure. We'll do this for the other collider size. Let's make a note here. Um, shrink so budding cubes do not overlap. I'm not sure if that's how you spell it, but that's how I'm going to spell it because I have the sense of humor of a six-year-old. Uh, let's get our results. Uh, 
And then let's restore Oh, wait a minute. I can just say new uh, vector 3.1, can't I? And we'll put a warning here saying this will break if our cubes are ever bigger then a size of one by one by one. And we can return the result. Okay. How about now, guys? <clears throat> oh, hey. Oh, okay, it's happy. Cool. Dang it. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Failure to rotate. Collision. That's what I wanted to see. Excellent. Excellent. Physical link. If not valid. Rotation. Rotator. Dot set. Or can rotate this. Cannot rotate this frame. No need to pass a variable there. I like that. Feeling good, guys. Dang it! Ah, we need to set cannot rotate this frame in pre-rotate. That's the whole point of it is valid but pre-rotate doesn't know what direction to rotate the cube i believe begin rotate does this start and applied and then we calculate target and ease Well, does this break anything? We're only using pre-begin-rotate. There's got to be a reason why I didn't put this down here, right? It's got to be. That doesn't make sense, though. I can do this wherever I want. There's only one class using it. And with this here, that means I can move all of this code and rotate. Okay, here we activate and break all paths already. Cool. Hmm, yeah, I'm worried about calling this function in two separate places. So on begin rotate, wait, what? What's happening here? Right, I put pre begin rotate up there so we can decide on here. Oh no. What a conundrum. We might have to solve this a different way. <clears throat> okay. 
because the problem with our physical link is that our physical link needs to know the target rotation. And the target rotation relies on whether or not this can rotate. You know what I could just do? I could just make another rotation called fail rotation. And then when I ask for the target rotation, look at these variables. Because there's two different stages here in which our cube can fail to rotate. The first stage is that obviously there's a whittling walking on it or some attribute of the cube disallows it from doing so. Or the destination of the cube is invalid, therefore it cannot rotate. But once again, we're doing this for all of the cubes. You know, no, no, no. Our physical link isn't responsible for rotating the cube. It's just responsible for giving the rotator the important information on how to rotate it. So let's move this pre-rotate back up. So our pre-begin rotate, maybe we just do this, set parents and stuff. And then in here, we can test the validity in on begin rotate. Hey! Wait, is this the right one? Pre? No, this is the one we want to keep. This is the one that we want to pull. Uh, hold on a moment. <laughs> what? Okay, so I think I can actually solve this simply. Instead of saying equals false, I'm going to say and equals false. So because we're calling this in two separate places, even if the second one returns true, true and equals false is still false. So instead of setting it, oh, but that would just set it to false. Huh. So what's going on here? I'm confused. I feel like my order is correct now. This is pre, where I check for just normal delegates. And here it said failure to rotate. <clears throat> oh, right, but my failure to rotate must happen in pre. 
but I need these rotations. <coughs> So this does need to come down. Into pre-begin rotate. Here we make them children. Check validity of paths. So this get target rotation I do believe actually we could put this here, right? And I still have start and applied. Do I have an accessor for applied? So this means that the applied rotation, okay, starting to feel the steam pick up. Um, So we're going to do this in two separate if checks, right? Because if it's not valid, we'll say you cannot rotate this frame and return. That means that we failed our delegate checks and you're out automatically. We don't need to do anything else. But if it gets past this, then we know that the applied rotation is what we're going to be using. And get start rotation here. Excellent, excellent. So here we do all this fun stuff. And we'll say is valid. Oh, this is confusing. And equals. Okay. Who did this with the lowercase? And what are you? Okay. Well, asking who did this when I'm the only one working on the project is a little bit silly. So if it returns true, then we're negating it, and that's false. And that means that they are and false is going to kill us. Oh no, but if they don't overlap, <clears throat> this will return false, this negates it to true, and true should keep us afloat. Okay, solid. And once more, into the breach, dear friends. And finally, I, I was afraid I was going to forget this. Um, need to rotate it back. That was some surgery. Oof, do you see that lag there? Hey, it works. Not the fastest. Oh, hey. <laughs> cool. Nice.
Very exciting. Tons of failed connections all over the place. But that, I don't know. I'm not sure if that's just my imagination. About the lag. But hey, it works. We can optimize it later. Let's get rid of all this crazy, crazy printing that we had going on. I know that my objects have linked neighbors. <sighs> what just happened? Oh my god. Um maybe that was because it was in the middle of updating the code that I commented out. I don't think we need to check this anymore. Yeah, I think because I commented out code, Unity was recompiling while I did the lerp and it threw the time step off. Thank you. Uh, rotate complete. I like to see that. Can it rotate? Rotate fail complete. I like that too. Sure. Check and get all the other cubes, sure. Yeah. Well, we did it, chums. We have our physically linked cubes blocking themselves when you make an invalid move by spinning the group. Very cool. Oh, we've only got about 10 minutes left, so let's try and tackle this really sad problem where it appears that the cube that we're spinning doesn't make a connection. Which one are you? Your cube A. Hey, the face is there now. All the faces are there. I must have deleted some code to make it unhappy. Oh, I calcul I, I commented out um, calculate hidden faces. When do I calculate hidden faces in my cube core? In the begin rotate during this bit. So actually, I feel like I can't do it in here per se. I need to do it down here. Or no, right here. Yeah. And this is not great form. I'm going to use um, not testing anything, but I already have all of the Um, I already have all of the things in, oh, it's linked cubes. That's what it's called. That's fine. It's a better name anyway. Oh. Hey, come on. Um, sure. Nothing too special here, right? Uh, 
um, it's core. And I'll make a note here. If we get to this point successfully, our cube can rotate successfully. Hide the proper faces. Oh, oh there, that should be fine. <laughs> I was worried for a second um, that it's not going to work with the other two cubes, but at that point, they're children. Happy Whitling. Dead Whitling. How about you? Happy Whitling. You? Dead Whitling. What is going on, guys? Cube A. So it's hidden. Let's, um, I know how to break it quickly, right? We can do one, two. And we have two failed connections. Our end leaf node of our A's up face. Up face, really? Yeah, that's his face right here. What are you doing, up face? What do you think you're doing? Why are you trying to connect to something? This is the back face. Hmm. Well, I feel a little bit <coughs> better now that I figured out sort of where it's coming from, but I'm perplexed as to why it's doing that. Why would it be running this on an up face? Let's debug. Got four minutes left. Now six minutes. This is why being able to consistently reproduce a bug in a short amount of time is extremely valuable in terms of development. Happy, sad. Okay. Validate all path nodes. Base index zero, sure, that makes sense. Now uh, we got to go up the stack the correct way. Three path nodes, that's right. If is active, true. It thinks that the up cube face is active? That could be be the problem, but I just saw it wasn't active. Hmm. Up face. Clone is active true. Okay, so wherever we're setting this with our physical cubes, oh my god, let's test other cubes. Oh, geez. Okay. Reverse. Cool. Our spirit cubes with one broken is still happy. Slippery gym, the slipperiest cube of them all. Okay. So our logic, let's look at where we set the cube face is active. Set is active. Hmm. 
activate and break all paths. We set this to true. And if has neighbor in face direction, we set this to false. This is in calculate hidden faces. This should be called in two places. Oh. In start, sure. Hide in active faces. Hey. Rotate complete. Are we hiding in active faces? I believe we are. Okay, cool. Sure. Hmm. Well, I think that's it for today. We solved the problem that we're looking for. We've made some headway into the next problem on the barrel. I, I don't believe that that's an actual phrase. Um, but I, it is now, sure. On the barrel. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. 50 episodes in, it's coming along. I got some cool stuff, a few bugs, but, uh, yeah, I think I might be ready to start making levels soon. This idea was a pretty ambitious one, but it's only taken me a couple days to get it somewhat working. There are still kinks to iron out, but, um, <clears throat> that's it. I'll see you all tomorrow for episode number 51.